Hello, I'm Mark Middleton, Instrumental Education Director for the Indiana State School Music Association. Welcome to the ISMA Academy and Phase 2 of our Adjudicator Certification Training. If you are watching this video, you have most likely completed Phase 1 of the training by either attending the Phase 1 training session at the IMEA conference in January, or by watching the online video on the ISMA Academy website. In Phase 2 of the Adjudicator Certification process, we will focus on endorsement training for specific events offered by ISMA throughout the year. In this session, we will examine concert organization events for junior high, middle school, elementary, and high school divisions. The performing ensembles in this event are designated by type of ensemble and by group level. Directors are to enter events according to the difficulty of the literature performed, as well as the experience and ability level of their students. As an adjudicator, please be aware of the category and group level to which you are listening as you do your assessment of the performance. In the junior middle elementary classification, you will most often see two types of instrumental ensembles, band and string orchestra. Full orchestra is also offered at the JME level. Students participating in this event encompass grades 5 through 9. There are five group levels offered in the JME classification. Group 5, formerly known as elementary, consists of beginning first-year players in grades 5 and 6 playing very easy music. Group 4 is for ensembles also consisting of a majority of first and second year players performing very easy music. A Group 3 ensemble consists of developing second-year players performing easy music. In Group 2, ensembles consist of more proficient second- and third-year players performing medium easy level music of a little more challenging nature. Group 1 is the highest level of performance, consisting of advanced middle school junior high players performing medium level music. There is a required list of music for Group 1 JME Division. When judging JME events, please keep in mind that you will be listening to students with limited years of performance experience. Be realistic in your expectations. However, the organization should be judged on how well they perform the music the director has selected for them. If a group enters Group 4 but selects Group 1 level music, you should expect them to be able to perform that chosen music program. In the high school classification, you may also encounter bands, string orchestras, and full orchestras. Students in these ensembles will be in grades 9 through 12. There are four group levels in the high school classification. Groups 1, 2, and 3 have required music lists, while Group 4 has a suggested list. Unlike the JME division, there is also a sight reading component required for Groups 1, 2, and 3. Sight reading is optional for Group 4. A Group 4 ensemble opting to complete the sight reading component would receive a score and comments, but the score would not be included in their overall rating. Group 4 ensembles would perform medium easy music and would consist of less experienced players. Group 3 is for developing high school players performing medium level music. Group 2 would consist of ensembles with more proficient experienced players performing medium difficult music. As with the JME division, Group 1 is for the most experienced ensembles consisting of advanced players performing difficult music. In judging high school ensembles, your expectations and standards of performance should be higher than at the JME level. However, it is still important. 
important to recognize that there may be a great difference in performance level from group 4 to group 1. As always, you should assess the performance based on how well the ensemble plays the music the director has chosen for them. Group 1, 2, and 3 High School and Group 1 JME have required music lists. Ensembles entering these group levels must play one number from the required list for their group level. Organizations not performing required music when specified for their respective classifications shall be penalized by being rated one division lower by the judges. A selection from a higher group level list may be used as a selected number, but may not be used to satisfy the requirement for the required selection of the group level entered. An organization performing a required composition with multiple movements must perform all movements unless otherwise specified on the required list. Suitable cuts may be made, but exclusion of required movements is considered unsuitable. Full orchestras performing a symphony may select any movement on the listed symphony on the required list to meet the required composition component. The other two pieces performed are selected numbers that may or may not be from the required lists. For bands, one of the selected pieces may be a march. For full orchestras, one selected number can be for strings only. Group 4 High School and Group 2, 3, 4, and 5 JME have suggested lists of music appropriate for that group level. Ensembles may or may not perform pieces from these lists. Due to the lack of a required list for these groups, it is requested that you do not determine the rating of an organization due to your belief that a composition is not appropriate for a given group designation. As previously mentioned, bands entering one of these group levels may perform a march as one of their selected pieces, and full orchestras may perform one selection for strings only. There are three judges on each instrumental panel, and all will be making recorded comments during the performance. If you feel uncomfortable about making verbal comments, Please introduce yourself at the beginning of the recording and tell the group that you will be making written comments. Run the recorder throughout the group's performance, whether you're making verbal comments or not. Obviously, the fewer verbal comments made, the greater the need for written comments. Now let's look at the assessment tool for this event, the Instrumental Organization Adjudicator's Comment Sheet. The comment sheet has been developed to be used from left to right when assessing a performance. The far left column contains nine categories or areas of assessment with descriptors of items to consider within each category. All categories are of equal weight and should be given equal consideration during the assessment. The middle column provides an area for specific remarks and referencing specific measures in the music while identifying both positive achievements and areas of concern in each of the nine categories. The column on the far right is used for check marks, which assign a point value for each category based on the specific comments and observations made in the middle column, as well as corresponding to the language in the rubric above this section. A 1 in a category would indicate a performance that was outstanding in nearly every detail. This does not mean a perfect performance, but one that demonstrates obvious proficiency and preparation. 1.5 indicates some minor flaws, but still a very polished performance. A 2 would indicate frequent minor flaws, indicating a performance that is perhaps a little less polished. A 2.5 is described as some major flaws. We are now entering the territory of a less than polished performance with some less than careful preparation evident. The last three point values, 3 frequent major flaws, 3.5 continuous major flaws, and 4 
unacceptable in nearly every detail, should be used sparingly, except in obvious cases of careless performance and preparation. Remember that the points you assign in the rubric column should be an accurate reflection of the comments you provided in the middle column. Positive complementary comments followed by a 2.5 given in a category is confusing to the director and performers, and it is also difficult to justify. Conversely, a rubric with all ones and no supportive comments is equally frustrating for a director and ensemble looking for a thorough formative assessment. Be sure that you make comments that can be used by the director and students to improve future performances and provide justification to your rating. Make encouraging comments as well as critical ones. If you do nothing more than check ratings boxes, you are not providing assessment that can be used to enhance instruction. Ask yourself, if the numbers were removed from the sheet, what would this ensemble get from my assessment? Also ask, have I let the director and students know what is right with their performance, as well as what concerns I might have? In addition to your recorded comments and specific notations in the center column, written suggestions for improvement and acknowledgement of successes should be notated at the bottom of the sheet after the performance has finished, especially for categories where a point deduction has occurred. Comments may also be written on the back of the sheet if more space is needed and time allows. Let's now take a look at each of the nine assessment categories, their descriptors, and items for you to consider as you formulate an evaluation in each category. Category 1 deals with intonation, the realization and accuracy of pitch within the ensemble. In this category, you are to consider three levels of intonation, individual, section, and full ensemble. You should be aware of opportunities throughout the performance to evaluate all three levels and also how the three are interrelated. Solos, solis, and section features provide opportunities to evaluate intonation on an individual and section level, while full 2D passages lend the adjudicator an opportunity to assess how intonation at the individual and section level affects the pitch accuracy of the full ensemble. It is beneficial to know basic pitch tendencies of each instrument, i.e. the problem notes, and helpful to provide some suggestions on how to compensate for these notes on an individual basis to provide greater opportunities for successful pitch on a section and ensemble level. Comments such as, flutes, you aren't in tune, listen to each other, do not provide the director or students with enough information for significant improvement. As was mentioned earlier, it is important to remember what age and group level you are evaluating and have realistic expectations about the level of pitch accuracy you can expect from the ensemble. Category 2 refers to tone quality, the timbre or color of sound produced by the ensemble. The assessment of tone quality can be approached in much the same way as intonation on the individual, section, and ensemble level. Descriptors to consider in reference to tone quality are resonance, control, clarity, focus, consistency, warmth, and also how all of those can be affected by breath or bow control. Be visually observant as well as orally observant since such things as posture and ensemble setup can have an impact on the quality of the sound you are hearing. Again, it is important to not only identify concerns, but to also evaluate what may have caused them and provide suggestions on how to improve. Age, group level, and experience of the ensemble will once again factor into your expectations of what constitutes a good tone quality.
Category number three refers to articulation and the different types of tonguing and bowing techniques used to produce various styles of articulation found in the performance. Consider such articulations as tenuto, marcato, staccato, lato, accents, and slurs, as well as examples such as pizzicato, detaché, or tremolo, specifically unique to strings. Listen and assess how successfully the students are producing these different articulations, and if they are matching that production from person to person, section to section, and as an ensemble. Evaluate and offer feedback on how the ensemble's tonguing style and or bow usage is affecting the clarity and consistency of the articulation style being displayed. Consider also the clarity, accuracy, and consistency of attacks and releases as it relates to ensemble clarity and precision. This is also an important element of Category 3. Category number four concerns note accuracy. In this category, you should not just ask yourself, did they play all the right notes? You should also consider whether the ensemble displayed the technique and mechanical skills necessary to meet the technical demands of the music. Consider if the ensemble accurately played within the key signatures or tonal center of the piece, as well as observing and accurately performing accidentals outside the key. Evaluate the fluency and clarity of runs and highly technical passages. Again, have realistic expectations depending on the age and group level of the students, but also be consistent in expecting the ensemble to perform the music they have chosen. Category 5, Rhythmic Accuracy, can be thought of and approached in much the same manner as note accuracy. It is not enough to ask, did they play all the right rhythms? You should consider how well the ensemble plays within the established pulse of the music, the accuracy and correct duration of note and rest values, the clarity and fluency of such techniques as syncopation, polyrhythm, and hemiola, and the demonstration of the correct meter and or meter changes within the music. Consider how well the ensemble demonstrates and handles the rhythmic pulse of the music, not only from a horizontal standpoint, but vertically as well, i.e., do all the parts line up within the framework of pulse, rhythm, and time. Interpretation and Musicianship, Category number 6, encompasses a great many elements of performance. It may also be one of the most difficult categories to evaluate while remaining objective and unbiased. When evaluating this category, consider not only if the ensemble is playing what is on the page, but also if they are taking the music to a higher level of understanding and performance. Let's examine the descriptors in this category more closely. In terms of style, evaluate if the ensemble is presenting the music in the correct style or genre. A march should not be interpreted like a ballad, or vice versa. Ask yourself, does the style being displayed by the ensemble match the intent of the piece? Phrasing is defined as a group of notes performed together as one musical thought. When evaluating phrasing, consider how well the ensemble phrased together, how well they gave shape and direction to each phrase, and how successful the ensemble was in connecting one phrase to the next, giving the entire performance direction. Accuracy of tempo is very important in the interpretation of the music. If a piece is marked at quarter note equals 160, and the ensemble performs it at quarter note equals 100, that is a significant change to the character of the music. Slight variations to indicated tempo markings should not be seen as a big problem, as long as it doesn't change the character or intent of the piece. Expression and emotional involvement are those elements not necessarily indicated on the page, but are those things brought to life by the conductor and performers working together to make a musically pleasing moment for the audience.
Remember to keep an open mind when evaluating this category, as there can be more than one way to interpret a piece. When considering Category 7, Dynamics, listen for the demonstration of an appropriate range of all dynamic levels and contrasts by individuals, sections, and the ensemble. Evaluate if the dynamic you see on the score is the one being performed, and is the ensemble consistent in their approach to displaying a full range of dynamic levels. If there are multiple dynamic levels occurring at the same time in different sections, is the ensemble displaying a sensitivity to those differences? Consider how well the ensemble controls and supports all dynamic levels. Does the ensemble display the appropriate contrast on crescendos and decrescendos and subito changes in volume? Finally, consider if the dynamics displayed by the ensemble have contributed to a musically pleasing performance. Dynamics are another area, like tone quality and intonation, where the expectation level can be increased with the age and experience level of the performer. Balance and Blend, Category 8, is really two separate musical elements. Balance refers to such descriptors as the projection of the melodic line versus the accompaniment parts, and equal presentation of all members of chords or of contrapuntal polyphonic lines. Blend refers to a group playing in such a way as to produce a characteristic sound without individual instruments standing out. The sounds from different sections are merged so that the overall sound is greater than the sum of the individuals. It is important to listen for and make comments about both of these elements that are so similar, yet so different. The final category, Other Factors, provides the adjudicator an opportunity to evaluate and assess some of the logistical or aesthetic areas of the performance not wholly related to elements contained in the music. Some of the descriptors include posture, appearance relating to performance, and general conduct. It is important for an adjudicator to be both orally and visually observant during the performance, as often what you see and observe visually can go a long way in helping explain what you're hearing in a performance. This category also offers an opportunity to evaluate the appropriateness of the literature selected for performance and of any cuts that are made in the music and their effect on the overall presentation. Once the performance has ended and you have identified specific areas of achievement and concern in your written and recorded commentary, it is time to make checks in the right-hand column indicating the point total you feel the ensemble has earned based on your comments and the descriptors in the rubric. This should be an easy and painless process if you have made good comments in each category throughout the performance. The numbers should reflect the commentary, not the other way around. Once a number has been checked in each category, add up the points and record the total in the blank marked total points. Check to make sure that your point total is correct. Initial any erasures or changes that you make on the sheet. You are strongly discouraged to change a number if it causes the lowering of the overall rating. At this point, looking now at the sheet from right to left, circle the rating that represents the ensemble's point total. The total score and rating should be an accurate reflection of the specific comments and assessments written in the middle column. Do not try to make the sheet fit a perceived rating. Make sure that you sign your sheet in the bottom right corner. In the bottom left hand corner, there is a box for indicating penalties for infractions. The penalty for not providing the judge with musical scores is one division rating lower. The penalty for measures not being numbered is one point added per score per judge. Other infractions resulting in penalties include not playing a selection from the appropriate required list, 
which is one division rating lower, and not completing all facets of performance for the group level entered, i.e. not completing the sight reading component. This results in a participation rating. For comment only should never be used at an organization event. Any questions about rules interpretations should first be handled by the head judge or contest host. If either are still unsure about the situation, the host should then contact the executive director for guidance. When serving as an adjudicator at an ISMA event, it is important to remember that you are an agent of the association and are therefore representing ISMA in your promptness, courtesy, dress and deportment, and interactions with the host and volunteer workers, your fellow adjudicators, and the directors and students of the participating schools. Set a good example for concert etiquette by remaining at your station and making sure your electronic devices are silenced during performances. Judges should not confer during performances, although it is perfectly acceptable to compare notes from time to time between groups. Please remember to be discreet in your conversations, as other ears might be listening to what you have to say. Thank you for taking the time to complete this Phase 2 endorsement training for organization events. Now it's time to test your knowledge of what you have learned by completing a short true-false quiz. We hope you hear many musically pleasing performances as an adjudicator, and thank you again for your continued interest in ISMA and the students and teachers we strive to serve.